Hey guys, so we're going to go through uh, a lecture today on another element of stories. We're going to be talking about the element of character. Um, we're going to talk about how authors use it and what are the different parts of it. Okay, so every story needs characters, right? They help move the story along. Characters can look like a lot of different things. They can be people like Harry Potter, Luke Skywalker, um, Elsa from Frozen, Homer Simpson from The Simpsons, Captain America from the Marvel Universe. They can be animals. They can be characters like Nemo, Mickey Mouse, Simba from The Lion King, Kermit the Frog, or Winnie the Pooh. They can also be creatures, SpongeBob, Shrek, Ursula. These are all um, characters in their own right. They have personalities, but you know, SpongeBob um, is technically an animal, but he has arms and legs, um, which kind of make him an oddity and more of a creature. Pikachu, right? It's Pokemon, not really an animal. Um, so creatures can be lots of different types. I'm sorry, characters can be lots of different types of things. Now, you guys are getting older, so it's time to learn that uh, you have a couple of different ways of referring to the main character. So in stories, the protagonist is the main character. They are not good or bad. They're the focus of the story. Um, generally, when you're younger, protagonists are pretty simple, right? You have somebody like Mickey Mouse or Winnie the Pooh, who they don't really have very complicated lives. But as you get older, your characters change and you might get somebody like the Black Panther who has a much more complicated storyline, which is why we don't say good or bad. The Black Panther, um, King T'Challa, makes bad choices. He makes good choices. He has some bad traits. He has some good traits, right? He's a complex human being. So the, pro, the main character of a story is not always the good guy. That's why we talk, we refer to them as the protagonist. So on the opposing side of our protagonist, we have the antagonist. So in stories, the antagonist is the person or thing that works against the main character. They are also not good or bad. So the reason why we say antagonist is because they antagonize the main character. Um, they create the problems for them. Sometimes they're direct. Sometimes they want to do that. But other times they just kind of happen to be the thing that is in the way of the protagonist. So in terms of things that decide to work against the protagonist, you might have characters like Ursula, who worked directly against Ariel in The Little Mermaid, right? She was out to get her. You have Voldemort, who is actually trying to kill the main character in Harry Potter, okay? So there's lots of different types of those kind of villain figures who are the antagonists. But an antagonist is also things like the velociraptors in the Jurassic World series or Jurassic Park series. They're not bad on purpose. They're not doing anything to anybody um, because they want to, right? They're creatures who are following their own instincts, their hunting instincts. Um, they're not doing anything because they hate the main character. It's just kind of who they are. Same thing with weather. There are some stories where the antagonist of the main character might be something like a tornado. So, you know, at the very beginning of um, The Wizard of Oz, the tornado is part of the problem for the main character. Um, there's another story uh, that we may read toward the end of the year um, where the main character is in a snowstorm and the snowstorm is working against him. All of his problems come from that snowstorm. So again, the snowstorm is the antagonist. It doesn't hate the person. Um, it's not going after him. It's just the thing in his way. So that's the antagonist. Okay, so let's talk about characterization. 
So characterization is the way in which an author shows the personality of a character. So it's a technique that writers use to make the character come to life. And there's a number of different ways that they do this, but there's two types that we're going to talk about here. So writers can do two things to, they can tell you directly about a character. They could say, Freddie was very competitive, or they can tell you indirectly about a character and they can let you infer about them. So two days before the game, Freddie gathered his teammates and laid out his plan. He said, we are going to win this one. No excuses. So from what he said and the fact that he gathered up his teammates and had a plan, we can infer that Freddie is competitive. The author didn't tell us that. They indirectly told us that Freddie was competitive. So let's examine those a little bit closer. So direct characterization tells the reader the personality of the character. It's obvious to the reader and it spells it right out. The patient boy and the quiet girl were both well behaved and did not disobey their mother. So we get, we get nothing. We don't have to guess anything. The author just tells us the boy is patient. The girl is quiet. They're both well behaved personality traits right there. Now, on the other hand, we have indirect characterization. So indirect characterization shows things that reveal the personality of the character. And there's uh, a way to kind of remember this. It's called steel. So how do we know things about our characters through their speech, through their thoughts, through how they affect others, how others feel around about uh, around them, their actions and their looks. So here's an example. The boy sat next to his sister as she poked him and teased him. He did not react. He carefully picked up her doll from the floor and placed it on her lap, saying gently, here you go. Why don't you play with your doll? So I can tell that this young man is very patient. I can tell that he is kind. And there's nothing in this text that tells me that directly. Everything is just, what are his actions? What did he say? What did, what was his, his effect? on her and how did he act when maybe somebody would have acted very differently somebody would have done something like picked up the doll and thrown it across the room right that tells me something very different than what this character told me okay okay so let's get to character motivation so this is character motivation is the reason behind why the character does what they do. So what does the main character want more than anything else? What do other characters want more than anything else? And what possible issues would exist between characters? So you, for example, you may have a character that um, robs a bank. Well, what was his motivation? What was his reason for doing so? Did it have to do with another character? Is it simply because he's greedy and that's his personality trait? Or did he have another issue with another character in the text, right? So there's lots of different reasons why somebody might do something. There's lots of different types of motivations. So the way that we look at characters, the way that we analyze characters is through the following ways. So if I ask you, to analyze a character, this is what I'm expecting you to go through and look at. So what is the physical appearance? What do they look like? What is their personality and character traits? Um, and you have to be careful here because physical appearance um, is not the same thing as personality. Like a lot of times if I say, okay, what is this, what's a character trait of this character? Students will say, oh, they're tall. Well, tall is not part of your personality. Tall is how you look. So just be careful about those um, two in thinking about how somebody acts versus what their personality is like. Um, what's their background or personal history? What's their motivation? Why do they act the way that they do? What are their relationships? Do they have any conflicts or struggles? Does the character change over the course of the text that we're reading? What do they think and feel 
during the text? How do others feel about them? If you look at all of these different things, you're able to analyze character and get a really good understanding of them. And authors write about characters in all of these ways. They think about all these little things as they're writing characters in order to give you characterization, in order to make sure that the reader understands the character better than anybody else, um, or to make sure that you understand the story in the way that you need to understand the story by looking at the character. Because a lot of times the way that a character changes over a story is um, part of why the story is important. You know, it, that is to teach you a lesson um, all on its own, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about when we get to plot. So, okay. You're gonna go ahead and go and do your knowledge check. So you're gonna go back to uh, classwork on Google Classroom. You're gonna go take the character slides assignment to show me what you have learned. Um, I will attach these slides um, separately on this assignment and you can open those up and use them while you take the um, character slides assignment. Um, so please do that. Don't feel like you just have to do it all on your own. Um, and then just make sure you use them also because when you answer, you only get one chance to reply. Um, and that's because that just how we do it. Got to make sure you're paying attention. Okay. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys later. Bye.